will start the recitation by doing problems in section 5.1 and 5.2. The first problem we will solve is number 10 in section 5.1. Find explicit formulas for the sequence with the initial terms given. The sequence begins with 1 over 3, 4 over 9, and 9 over 27, and it goes on. By observing the initial terms, we can see that all numerators are square numbers. 1 is 1 square, 4 is 2 square, 9 is 3 square, so the numerator should have the form n square. We also observe that the denominator uh, we also observe that um, each successive item in the denominator is three times greater than the one before. So the denominator is the power of three and should have the form three to the nth power. The explicit formula is a n equals n squared over three to the nth power, where n is an integer and n is greater than or equal to one. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 22 in section 5.1. We are asked to compute this summation. There are 10, 10 terms in total. We can write them out and observe that the first fraction of a term is cancelled out by the second fraction of the previous term. So minus one half cancels out plus one half minus one third cancels out plus one third. And in the end, minus one tenth cancels out plus one tenth. So we are only left with one over one in the beginning and minus one over 11 at the end. So one minus one over 11 gives us 10 over 11. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 38 in section 5.1. We are asked to write using summation or product notation. There is more than one way to write the summation here. So there are seven terms in total. So we can write summation from k equals, k equals to one to seven. We observe that the terms are squares, one square, two square, three square so they can be written in the form of k square. Since it is an alternating sequence, we need negative one to the k plus one power for the signs. Since k starts at one here, negative one to the one plus one power is negative one to the second power, which is equal to one, and that makes the sign of the first term positive. For the second term, negative one to the two plus one power is negative one to the third power, which is equal to negative one. So the sign before the second term is negative. Another way to write the summation is to start the sequence at k equals to zero. So the summation would be from k, k equals to zero to six. And the other parts also need to be changed, but these two have the same result. Any questions? Now we move on to section 5.2. The first problem we will solve is number eight. We are asked to prove the statement using mathematical induction. So we need to prove this property is true. Our first step is the base step. That is to prove P zero is true. When N equals to zero, the left hand, the left -hand side is just one and the right hand side is 2 to the 0 plus 1th power minus 1, that is 2 to the first power, which equals to, oh, that is 2 to the first power minus 1, which is equals to 1. So since the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, uh, P0 is proved to be true. Our next step is the inductive step, that is to show for all integers k greater than or equal to zero, if pk is true, then pk plus one is true. Let k be any integer with k greater than or equal to zero, and we suppose pk is true. 
That is, we suppose this formula is true, which is our inductive hypothesis. After assuming pk is true, we must prove pk plus 1 is true. That is, we must prove 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus up to 2 to the k plus 1th power is equal to 2 to the k plus 2th power minus 1. We will start with the left-hand side and prove it is equal to the right-hand side, which is 2 to the k plus 2th power minus 1. First, we make the next to last term 2 to the kth power explicit. Then we substitute 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared up to plus 2 to the kth power with 2 to the k plus 1th power minus 1, according to the inductive hypothesis. There are 2 2 to the k plus 1th power here, so we can combine like terms. Finally, we get 2 to the k plus 2th power minus 1, and that is exactly the right-hand side. Since the left-hand side of p k plus 1 is equal to the right-hand side, the property is true for n equals to k plus 1. Since uh, now both the base step and the index step have, have been proved, pn is true for all integers and greater than or, e or equal to zero. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 20 in section 5.2. This problem asks us to evaluate the sum or write it in closed form. We can observe that all terms here are multiples of four. So we can take four out of each term first. Then we apply the formula of the sum of the first n integers. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to 50 becomes 50 times 51 over 2. And it gives us 5100. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 24 in section 5.2. The instruction is the same as the last problem. We need to write the sum in closed form. Here, we can directly apply the formula of the sum of the first n integers. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to k minus 1 becomes k minus 1 times k minus 1 plus 1 over 2. Now, now, minus 1 and plus 1 cancel out. So it gives us k times k minus 1 over 2. Mm, that's all for section 5.1 and 5.2. Any questions? OK, thank you very much, Yunting. Thank you. So you can stop the uh, presentation and then Vasuda, you are next. Yeah. So try to share your screen. Yeah. Thank you. We can see your yeah. screen. Okay. Um. Um, is it like big enough now? Like I was told that my screen, yep, um, the things great. on my screen look really small. Yep, it is okay. great. Okay. So um, the first problem that we'll be solving is problem four from uh, 5.3. So this is the question. Um, yeah. So um, these are the steps that have been given and the question, um, for some reason, I'm not able to see it myself. Can you see it now? Uh, the the red dot. No, the uh, can you still see the page? Yes. Oh, okay. I was not able to read everything on the page before. Okay. So the question is to guess a general formula and prove it by mathematical induction. 
so um yeah so um if you observe all of these steps we find that in each of these steps these hold true you could try solving it yourself so for for the kth step we could generalize it by saying that um you have a uh, one minus four plus nine so each of these are uh, square terms the n square terms so uh, for the k uh, term would be minus one to the power k plus one times k square so um this if we assume this to be equal to uh, minus one to the power k plus one uh, times the uh, sum of the uh, first k integers uh, first k numbers or uh, natural numbers this is the uh, formula for the sum of um, first k natural numbers so we end up with something like this sorry yeah now uh, the uh, according to induction we um, assume the kth step to be right so this is our um, inductive step and we want to prove um, pk plus 1 so in this case pk plus 1 would need us to prove the same or uh, whatever came in p of k plus this extra term which account, accounts for the k plus 1's term now we could substitute the underlined with the right hand side of the p of k step and we end up with uh, this uh oh sorry yeah this um added with the uh, term that is shown in red over here by simplifying it we could take minus one to the power k plus one outside and k plus one also outside and we get k by two plus minus one times k plus one now with um, more arithmetic you end up with um these steps and you get minus one to the power k plus one times k plus uh, one times minus of k minus two by two. So with further simplification, we get to prove that this is the step that you finally get. Now, the, the sum of all the first uh, n um, natural numbers is n times n plus one div um, divided by two. Now this also applies the other way around. If you have um, n times n, n plus one divided by two, this is uh, this corresponds to the sum of first n integers. So by applying that, we could just directly um, add all the numbers until k plus one, and with this we have proved that p of k plus one holds. So through a mathematical induction, we have proved that this will be holding true for any any k that is greater than one so we have proved that these steps have um, you, you can prove them using mathematical induction and you, uh, it holds true for any k step second problem that we'll be looking at is uh, sorry is there, were there any questions okay so second problem that we'll be looking at today is problem number 14. Now, we need to prove that n cubed minus n is divisible by 6 for each integer n that is greater than 0. Now, um, yes, uh, greater than or equal to 0. So the initial step would be to show that it holds for 0. And we know that 0 cubed minus 0 is 0, which is just divisible by 6. So p of 0 would hold. Now, we, um, the inductive step would need us to assume that for a certain number of k that is greater than 0, uh, p of k would hold. So we could say that k cubed minus k should be 6 times r. So that's how a number that is divisible by 6 would look like. Now, um, for proving this inductively, we need to prove that p of k plus 1 is also divisible by 6. So p of k plus 1 could be written this way, k plus 1 cubed minus k plus 1. So uh, using simplification, we end up with a term like this. This um, over here, k cubed minus k is already divisible by 6. So which means uh, this should be 
uh, this should this part of the term should be divisible by six. But on the other hand, we haven't really come up with uh, three three k times k plus one need not be divisible by six is what you would think at the first glance. But if you think about it, k times k plus one will always be um, divisible by two because um, if you were to prove it uh, through cases, if k was even, then k plus one would be odd, and then by multiplying them both, you'll end up with an even number, so it's divisible by two. And if, on the other hand, if k was odd, then k plus one would be an even number, and so you'll anyway end up with um, a two as the divisor of k times k plus one, which means that three times uh, three k times k plus one will be also divisible by six. So through this, we um, we get that k, uh, even for p of k plus one, um, k plus one cubed minus k plus one is also going to be divisible by six. So which means p of k plus one would hold. And through mathematical induction, we proved it for any k that is greater than zero. The next problem that we'll be looking at is uh, problem 34a. So um, we have to prove that any checkerboard with dimensions two time uh, two two cross three n can be completely covered with L-shaped dominoes for any integer n is greater than one. So dominoes are basically these um, L-shaped um, structures. So for um, for n is equal to one, that will be our base step. Uh, um, the checkerboard would be of the dimensions two, two cross three. So we can see that you can arrange these terminals in this fashion, and you can cover two, two cross three. And for the inductive step, we assume that p of k would hold for all of the. Um, yeah, this would be a strong induction. So. We assume that this will hold for all k uh, for 1, 2, 3, until n. Uh, we need to prove that p of n plus 1 would hold true. Now, we know that 2 times 3n plus 1 checkerboard can be split into 2, 3n, and 2 cross 3 checkerboards, which would be like this and this. By strong induction, both of them are going to be holding true, which proves that um, 2 times 3n plus 1 would also be holding true because if you just have to put them together. So this is a visual um, example for um, induction, strong induction, in fact. So any questions? OK. We move on to um, 5.4. We'll be looking at problem number four first. Now, um, we, okay, the question reads, suppose that D1, D2, D3 is a sequence defined as follows. Uh, D1 equals nine by 10, D2 is 10 by 11, and DK is D of K minus one and D uh, K minus two for all integers um, such that K is greater than three. So, we need to prove that this is going to be less than um, greater than zero and less than or equal to one for all integers um, n is greater than one greater than or equal to one so for uh, the initial step we already know that d1 and d2 are both 9 by 10 and 10 by 11 both of which are uh, greater than zero and less than one now um, for inductive hypothesis, we are going to be assuming um, any integer k that is greater than 2. And we have to show that um, for k plus 1 term, um, this should be less than 1. So yes, uh, this is kind of straightforward because um, we, through strong induction, we assume that for all of the um, k terms, until a certain um, all of the k terms, you will be uh, having um, the terms to be less than one, 
less than or equal to one. So by multiplying any two positive numbers that are each of them are less than or equal to one, the product is always going to be less than or equal to one. So which means the k plus one term will naturally be less than or equal to one. So um, to this, we have proved that it's going to hold true for all of the all of the numbers in the sequence. Any questions? Next problem that we'll be doing is problem 16 from 5.4. We need to uh, prove that for any integer n is greater than or equal to 2, if n is even, then the sum of any, um, then any sum of n odd integers is even. And if n is odd, then any sum of n odd integers is odd. So we have found, okay, so we learned in the previous class that um, the sum of any two uh, odd numbers, the properties of uh, these numbers, such that if you add any two odd numbers, you're going to end up with uh, an even number. And if you add any two even numbers, you're going to end up with an even number. But if you um, add an even and an odd number, you're going to end up with uh, an odd number. So this is um, going to be useful in this problem. So um, we can generalize p of n to mean this. If n is even, then sum of any n odd integers is even. And if n is odd, then any sum of n odd integers is odd. Now, um, p of 2 is found to be true because we already uh, know about the what we learned in the last class. And p of 3 is going to be true because um, p of 3 is an odd number. So what we need to prove is that adding any three odd integers is going to give you an odd integer. Uh, but the first, adding the first two will give you uh, will give you an even integer because we found p of two to be true already. So adding an even and an odd number, uh, even and an odd number will uh, give you an odd number. So p of three is also found to be true. We see both of these to be true, and then. We assume that p of n is true for all um, all k such that it's um, for all 2, 3 until k. Now we consider the sum s of k plus 1 odd integers. Now it can always be split into 2 such that a is a sum of r odd integers and b is a sum of k plus 1 minus r or integers. This could be done in any way for some r, such that r is some um, positive uh, integer. So we'll have multiple cases where k itself could be uh, even or odd, and r could be even or odd too. So we have four cases. The first case is k plus 1 is even, and r is odd. So k plus 1 minus r is also going to be odd. Now, if p, p of r is going to be odd because uh, we, through strong, uh, strong inductive hypothesis, p of r is odd and p of k plus 1 minus r is also odd because um, both of these are found to be k r and k plus 1 minus r are found to be odd. Now, the sum of two odd numbers is going to be even. So we have end, uh, ended up with uh, p of k plus 1 for the case 1 to hold true. Now we do a similar thing for all the other cases, which is k plus 1 is even and r is even. Now k plus 1 minus r is also going to be even. So the sum of two even numbers is going to be even again. And uh, we have proved it for case 2. We repeat the same thing for k plus 1 being odd. And it's the same logic. Um, and with that, we prove that it, it, it will hold true for any uh, p k plus 1. So by induction, this is going to hold true for all k greater than or equal to 2. The final problem that we'll be doing today is this. Uh, do you have any questions so far? OK. So the question says, um, compute 4 to the power 1, 4 to the power 2, um, until 4 to the power 8. 
make a conjecture about the unit digit of 4 power n where n is a positive integer okay so this is this is what the compute uh, computed values look like um we see that the unit digit is 4 6 4 6 and it goes on that way so the conjecture is 4 raised to an odd power uh, has units digit 4 and 4 raised to an even uh, even power as units digit 6 and we see that repeating over and over and we want to know if this could be uh, generalized and proved to hold true for all all positive integers um, from this now we know that p of 1 and p of 2 are true because you've already computed them now our um, inductive hypothesis is going to say the units digit of 4 power n equals 4 if n is odd equals 6 if n is even we assume that this is going to hold true for all um, for all 1 2 until k so for case 1 we take two cases. We need to prove uh, prove that p of k plus one will also hold true. So if k plus one is going to be odd, then k is going to be even. So um, the by inductive hypothesis, the unit digit is going to be six. So if the unit digit is going to be six, we could represent four power k as a number of this form: ten times something for some number q um, plus six. The so four power k plus one is basically going to be four times. Um, um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. This should be exponential. I'll add that. So four power k times four, and um, from the previous step, using um, from the previous step, we get that ten q plus six times four, and we end up with forty times q plus twenty four. And in this case, we could take 10 outside and we get 10 times something plus 4, which means that 4 is going to be at the unit's digit. So P of k plus 1 is found to hold true if uh, k plus 1 is odd. Now we repeat the same thing for k plus 1 being an even, uh, even number. So in this case, we assume that 4, uh, 4 raised to the power uh, k is going to be 10 q plus 4. Uh, I have to make the same correction again. Uh, I'll do that uh, before uploading it. So uh, we substitute uh, 4 power 4 power k times 4 as 10 times q plus 4 whole times 4. And even in this case, we can take 10 out and we end up with 10 times 4 q plus 1 plus 6, which means that 6 is going to be at the unit's digit. So we also find that p of k plus 1 will hold if k plus 1 is even 2. So it will hold for both the cases. So we could say p of k plus 1 holds. So by strong induction, we see that this will hold for all k greater than or equal to 1. So with this, we come to the end of 5.3 and 5.4 exercises for today's recital. Do you have any questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Asuda. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. you can stop the presentation. And uh, Palak, are you here? Yeah, uh, I'll start sharing my screen. Thank you. One second. Yeah. Uh, can you see it? Mm, I haven't yet uh, heard anything. Let me take a look. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You can see it? Yes. OK. Uh, so today, I'll be doing 5.5 and 5.6 from the 5.5. No, please continue. Okay. Uh, from 5.5, I'll be doing problem 7, 25, and 36. So the seventh question is, uh, you're given a sequence, and you have to find the first four terms. Uh, 
the this is the sequence and u1 is 1 and u2 is 1 this is given so now we have to find u3 and u4 so to find u3 you just substitute the value in the formula uh, 3 into u2 minus u1 and both u2 and u1 are 1 so you'll end up with this answer and u4 is the same thing as that instead of u2 you'll be using u3 so uh, this is the formula and you substitute the values of u1 and u2 and you will get 7. This was pretty simple. Uh, this was the seventh question. Now I'll be doing the 25th question. Uh, this is the question. So the Fibonacci sequence satisfies the recurrence relation fk is equal to fk minus 1 plus fk minus 2 for all integers k is greater than or equal to 2. So we have to explain why fk plus 1 is equal to fk plus fk minus 1 for all integers k greater than or equal to 1. So here uh, we all know that the Fibonacci sequence has the sum of the previous two numbers is the next uh, number. So according to this, for any integer k greater than or equal to 1, fk plus 1 is equal to fk plus fk minus 1 because the previous two terms are fk and fk minus 1. And b and c is based on this, you have to write an equation for fk plus 2 and fk plus 3 in terms of the previous two terms. So here you can see that fk plus 2 is equal to fk plus 1 plus fk. And fk plus 3 is equal to fk plus 2 plus fk plus 1, because these two are the previous terms which you have to add. Any questions? OK. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the next question is based on compound interest. So the question is, suppose a certain amount of money is deposited in an account paying 4% annual interest, which is compounded quarterly. For each positive integer n, uh, Rn is the amount of deposit at the end of the nth quarter, and R0 is the initial amount deposited. So we have to find a recurrence relation for R0, R1, R2, and so on. So uh, we can see that the uh, annual interest that is compounded quarterly is 4%, and one year has four quarters. So the quarterly interest is 4% divided by 4, which is equal to 1%. So now the equation for Rn <coughs> sorry, can be written as um, Rn is equal to Rn minus 1 plus 1% into Rn minus 1. This is because every quarter only 1% increases and this is applicable for all integers greater than or equal to 1. So eventually Rn is equal to 1.101 into Rn minus 1. Uh, this is the final uh, answer. And this, uh, you can substitute the values for 0, 1, 2 and whichever to get the answer. Uh, the B part of this is if R0 is 5,000, find the amount of money on deposit at the end of one year. So one year consists of four quarters, and that's why we have to find R4, the amount which after four quarters. R0 is 5,000, and R4 is one point. So using this previous equation, 1.01 into Rn minus 1, we can write that R4 is equal to 1.01 R3. And similarly, you can sub keep substituting the value until you we have uh, until we get this formula 1.01 power 4 into r0, and here we know the value of r0, which is 5,000 given in the question. We can calculate that r4 is 5,203.02. Yeah, uh, that's the final answer. And the third part is you have to find the APR for the account. The annual percentage rate is the percentage increase in the money after one year and we can calculate this by subtracting the final amount minus the initial amount divided by the initial amount so in this case uh, the apr is 4.0604 percent uh, that's the final answer any questions in 5.5 okay uh, i'll start 5.6 now i'll be doing question 5 23 and 50 so the fifth question is to use iteration to guess an explicit formula for the sequence. And the sequence is given. 
uh, CK is equal to three CK minus one plus one. And the value of C1 is one, which is given. So now using this formula, we can find out C2, C3, C4 as it's uh, C2 is three plus one, C3 is three squared plus three plus one. C4 is the Q plus C squared plus C plus one, and go, it goes on like that. So the final uh, relation is Cn is equal to three power n minus one plus n minus two, and it goes on to one. So you can see that every term a three is added. And using this theorem, which I've given at the end, uh, you can su uh, simplify this to uh, three power n minus one divided by three minus one. So finally, C n is three n minus one divided by two. Uh, yeah, this uses this formula I've written down here. So yeah, this is the final answer. Uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, twenty three. So the twenty third question is: Suppose the population of a country increases at a rate of three percent per year. And the population is 50 million at one time. What will it be 25 years later? So from this question, we can see that a zero is 50 million, and a n. Uh, this is similar to the compound interest problem where we, you know, added a percent after each period. So here a n is equal to a n minus one plus three percent into a minus one a n minus one, and this. One so to in the end, a n is equal to one point zero three a n minus one. Now here, uh, because we're adding one point, I mean we're multiplying one point three after every period. Uh, we this is a geometric series, and here we use the formula. This is the generic e uh, equation for a geometric series where a n is equal to a into r power n, and in this formula we can substitute r as one point zero three and n is 25. So, and we know that uh, this is a zero, actually I'll substitute, I mean, I'll write that later. And uh, yeah, so a n is equal to 50 million into 1.03 power 25, which is this answer, and which is approximately 105 million. Uh, yeah, that's the final answer. And the final question for today is, or uh, determine whether the given recursively defined sequence satisfies the explicit formula a n is equal to n minus one square for all integers n greater than or equal to one. So this is the formula and we have to uh, put the different values in this and see if it matches this formula. Now a one is equal to zero and it, the answer is that the sequence does not satisfy the formula because According to this formula, n minus one squared, a four is equal to nine. But if you substitute the values in the sequence, which is given, the a k is equal to two a k minus one plus k minus one. When we substitute the values, you'll get that a one is zero, a two is one, and a three is four, which matches the formula. But the fourth, sequ uh, the fourth number is eleven, which does not match nine according to the formula. So because of this, the formula is not satisfied. And the sequence does not satisfy the formula. So that's it. Any questions? I see. OK, so then that's all for today. I will stop the recording.